So how do you choose the best solar inverter? With all the different inverter options that are on the marketplace now, it can be very overwhelming and confusing. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you five things to consider when choosing the best solar inverter for your project. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and for the past 12 years I've been helping families achieve energy independence using clean renewable energy. Now, if you're new to the Solar Surge channel, on Solar Surge you're going to find product reviews and comparisons on inverters, solar panels, batteries, um, pretty much any piece of technology that makes up a home renewable energy system. We also provide short educational videos like today's video here, where I'm gonna be teaching you five things to consider when choosing the best solar inverter for your solar project. Now, when we talk about inverters, every solar system that's hooked up to the electric grid needs an inverter. And what the inverter does at its core, it's converting direct current DC electricity, which is what natively comes off of solar cells as well as from batteries. And it converts it into alternating current electricity, which is what our homes are wired for and what the electric grid is wired for. So every solar system that hooks up to your home or hooks up to the grid has to have an inverter or has to have inversion happening at some point in the system. Uh, and there's two main ways that that is accomplished. Uh, one is with what's called a central inverter system. And with a central inverter system, pretty much all of the solar is, is sent down to one central uh, uh, inverter appliance which is typically mounted at ground level near your electric meter. And that single device does all of the DC to AC conversion for the entire system. So it's, it's one central point of conversion that's called a central inverter or a string inverter. Uh, the other architecture is the microinverter architecture. And the microinverter architecture, as, as the name sort of implies, uh, you have a small inverter, a microinverter, that's attached to each individual solar panel. So instead of having one central unit where the conversion happens in one place and could potentially fail, right? If that, if that unit fails, you could potentially lose the power output for the whole system. The microinverter architecture basically distributes it to each solar panel. So each solar panel has its own individual inverter. That way, if one fails, the other inverters in the system should remain functioning so you don't have a total system loss. And that is typically what it comes down to is there's, there's this trade-off of lower cost and efficiency with a central inverter system versus increased resiliency and redundancy with a micro inverter system because you're, you're kind of eliminating that, that central point of failure. So that's the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to consider which architecture makes sense for you. And as you're considering it, you really wanna look at what is the overall ecosystem or the, or the overall platform that is being offered by your inverter manufacturer. Because in today's market, it's not, it's not just the inverter that you're purchasing. What you're really doing is sort of choosing a platform that the entire system is going to be operating on. And that platform typically includes the inverter, your monitoring app, your load control, if that's part of the solution. It's going to determine whether or not an electric vehicle charger can be integrated into the system, and, and if so, at what level. Uh, it may also determine what type of batteries you can use with your system, as well as if you have a generator hookup option as well. And so what I'm going to be talking about is some of the pros and cons of each in today's video here. Okay, first, let's talk about battery backup. Uh, installing solar with battery backup is becoming more and more popular uh, for a couple of reasons. For those of you that are in California, the main reason is that there is no more one-for-one -one net metering buyback. And so, whereas you used to be able to, to sell any excess solar that you didn't need in the home during daylight hours, you could just sell the solar back to the power company at a full price credit, and then just pull back in what you need during the evening at that same, that same equal price credit. Well, now it's, it's about a four to one discrepancy of the buy rate versus the sell rate. So instead of selling back to the power company at a discounted rate, what most Californians are choosing to do is to charge a battery with any excess solar power that they have and then just power the home off the battery at nighttime. So you don't have to do as much buying and selling back and forth. Now, if you're looking for an inverter that allows you to do battery backup, the question of a central inverter or what's known as a lot of times a DC coupled system versus an AC or microinverter based system uh, can have more impact. 
because as I mentioned earlier, solar cells, solar panels, and batteries are all natively DC direct current devices. And so it's more efficient if you can take solar panel or, or your solar panel output in, in direct current format and send that directly to the battery in direct current format, that'll be a much more efficient battery charging than if you have to convert DC to AC on the roof and then convert AC to DC back at the ground to charge the battery. So right, these are conversion losses. Every time you have a power transformation or a conversion, there's a little bit of loss. It's never a 100% efficient process. And so the idea is uh, if you want to make use of battery storage with your solar system, um, a direct DC to DC solar to battery connection allows you to do that. That's also important now as we're seeing electric vehicle chargers become part of the mix for solar. Um, even bi-directional electric vehicles where you can not only charge the vehicle from solar, but in some cases you can pull energy out of the vehicle to either sell back to the grid or to provide emergency backup power to the home. Uh, so again, uh, if that is a capability that you're looking for, you might consider the DC coupled architecture the more efficient architecture in that respect. And that, that is the same as well. Sending direct current directly from your solar panels to an electric vehicle charger will charge that vehicle more efficiently than if there has to be a DC to AC and then back to DC a conversion. Uh, same thing applies if you're, if you're pulling energy out of the vehicle battery. If you, if you can pull energy out of the vehicle battery in a DC format directly from the vehicle battery to your, your, your home's inverter system, then you're only inverting once to provide backup power or self-consumption power into the home. So definitely something to consider here. However, on the AC coupled side of things, like with a microinverter based system, um, you also have some excellent AC coupled battery options available as well. Uh, the, the, the top two most popular are probably the, the Enphase IQ battery, as well as the Tesla Powerwall 2. Uh, the Tesla Powerwall 2 is designed to be sort of the, the most interoperable battery if you're somebody who's adding a battery later to an existing solar system. Uh, whereas the Enphase solution with their, their new IQ Battery 10 and the IQ Battery 5P, uh, these are AC coupled batteries that can interface with the microinverters operating on the solar array to provide for uh, as efficient as possible AC coupled battery charging, but you're never gonna have as efficient as if you can take direct DC from the solar and send it to the battery before any conversions happen. So definitely something to consider here. Another thing that you want to consider is the presence or the potential future presence of a traditional fuel burning generator. Now, many of you who are looking into solar purely for emergency backup and redundancy reasons, many of you choose to have several levers of redundancy. You, you may have your own solar panels. You may have your own battery backup to allow those solar panels to run off the grid during a blackout. And you may even want a generator hookup option as well as a third level backup. Uh, let's say we, we hit a patch of really bad weather, utility power's down, the solar's not producing very well because we're having very overcast weather. Well, you may want the option to fire up a fuel burning generator, not to run it all day, but run the generator, let, let's say for three or four hours, bring your batteries back full, and then you can go for running another one or two days off of battery power. So that's another consideration you're gonna to wanna to make as you're selecting your inverter, because it's typically your inverter that will determine is a generator input uh, even available. Uh, right now, the top hybrid inverters all offer some sort of a generator input, whether you're talking about uh, Enphase uh, on the Enphase IQ platform or the Solar Edge platform uh, with their home system, or even the Solark, uh, the Solark 15, uh, they all provide some sort of a generator input to give you that additional level of redundancy. Uh, of course, cost is always a factor with any and any of these decisions. Uh, typically, you're going to find that central inverter or string inverter based systems are gonna offer you a lower equipment cost than an AC coupled system. So right now, of the top three hybrid inverters that we, that we cover, uh, Solark is probably gonna be the most expensive on a price per watt basis. Uh, followed by Enphase, uh, whereas Solar Edge is probably going to give you the, the lowest overall price per watt on an equipment basis. So again, you, you've got the, to trade off. Am, am I looking for lower cost? Perhaps willing to trade off some, some resiliency, some redundancy? Or do I want a, a more distributed system like an Enphase microinverter system where there are more individual components, maybe a slightly higher cost per watt, but you can eliminate that, that one central inverter 
point of failure. Well, anyway, folks, the, the overall trend I'm seeing in the industry is that it is going to an all-in-one solution. So the, the inverter company pretty much is the central part of that system. And then with that inverter company may or may not include battery storage, load control, EV charger, uh, it pretty much will always have at least the monitoring app and, and just having everybody or every system component talking together on that same platform leads to a much, much more consistent installer and customer experience. Uh, there, there's some exciting new players that are in the space this year. You all have probably seen some of the information we put out about the new Savant power system. Uh, of course, you have uh, the new point guard system. Uh, Roy Pow has a new system that they're uh, bringing on the market. Again, all in one, one manufacturer. Um, Q Cells also has their Q Home Core system, uh, which is also an attempt to get everything on one platform. Of course, Q Cells, they have their own solar panels as well, right? And as, as well as their monitoring app. So that's the trend that we're seeing is really look at the different inverter options that are out there. Choose the platform that offers all the features and the capabilities that you want and accept that you're probably going to have a much, much better overall uh, customer experience, whether you're talking about just daily use or from a tech support, customer support perspective. And especially for you installers out there, I think having one phone number to call for tech support and fleet management is also going to help for a lot of long-term maintenance and keeping those systems online. So folks, this has just been a brief discussion on how to choose the best solar inverter. Uh, as always, if you're getting good value from the videos that we have here on Solar Surge, make sure you give us a thumbs up uh, and go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this coming out, you can stay up to date with us. Uh, of course, if you're a homeowner, if you're in the process of looking at different solar panel or different inverter options for your home, um, if you need to get a price quote, or maybe if, if you already have a quote and just want to make sure that you're getting the best equipment or getting the best pricing, um, as always, you can feel free to reach out to us on the link below there, uh, set up a call with one of our solar experts, and we'd be happy to get some pricing and some information to you. Well, that pretty much does it for today's video. As always, I thank you for spending some time with Solar Surge. I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon. All right, I hope you're getting some great value from today's video content. Now, if you would like to have your product or your business or technology featured on the Solar Surge channel, feel free to reach out to us at the link below so you can set up a call with our media team to talk about your marketing goals and how Solar Surge can help you get there. Solar Surge is the leading online community in the U.S. residential solar and energy storage space. And so if you'd like to get your product, business, or technology in front of our audience, we can help you do that. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to our media team at the link below or email media at solarsurge.net.